Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to The Rundown. This is episode 21, I believe. Is it 21? That's a good question. Let me double it, check. I'm sure it is. Yeah, no, 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 this is 22. My bad, it's 22. Oh, 22, hey. 22? Yeah, shows what no. I know. I don't fucking know anything. Uh, I am your host, Evan from High Media TV, joined by the illustrious Nota to Brian, my friend and confidant. Uh, and yeah, hey, we are everyone. here. Guess who I had a convert? Guess who I had a phone call with the other day? Who'd you talk to? William Landis. How are they doing? They, in correct pronouns, by the way, is doing very, very well. Oh, um, good to hear. I'm they glad. are they are currently working on they are currently working on becoming a stenographer and a slew of eclectic interests and tastes. Firstly, learning how to play an organ like the good girl played the great David Christopher. He's also now learning to. They are also learning now to uh, be a stenographer, which God knows that there is real money in that, or at least a guaranteed job for court. Just in general, he's interested in the concept of it, and I think he and I think they are. Um, going to give that a shot that's yeah that's really cool i'm glad they're doing that uh that sounds like they're i hope they're successful and i hope they get the job uh and it's really good to hear from them so glad yeah. to see you talk yeah uh it's uh also uh the purge finally happened uh, if you if you were a member of the high media tv discord and you were not ver and you did not verify your account verify your account via captcha on the discord by yesterday when even though you had a month's notice you have been kicked you are welcome to rejoin but you have to do your captcha verification and the bot auto kicks people who don't complete their verification in 24 hours i think i got kicked no you're here okay you're 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 in this bitch dude like okay good I like, didn't know if I verified or not. Did you really? imagine? Yeah, no, you ver no, you're verified. You you did the capture verification. Okay, cool. But yes, shows how much I know too. <laughs> yes, it shows how fucking little work it is to do. By the way, he doesn't even fucking work. No, literally, it's a two second thing. If you didn't do it, come on, come on. I got the goal. <laughs> yeah, but um. Let's get into like the past week's events. Uh, just a quick positive policy politic note that we don't need to go into. Kamala had Harris has uh, a, a, a presidential candidate. Harris has announced her um, economic plans for her first hundred days, which include um, a a uh, price controls on groceries and medicine. Nice. Nice. Uh, as well as first-time home buyer support uh, for up to twenty-five k for a down payment. See, I told you it was a good idea. <laughs> as well as three million houses being built. Although part of the housing thing was a little swirly whirly for me. Um, she did say that she wanted to have talks and like come up with all. She didn't actually put out anything super concrete in that regard, outside of the assistance, like. She, Fundamentally, the only way to get housing prices down in a in a timely fashion is to the, oversaturate the market. Is to either oversaturate the market or price control. And she in price controlling the entire housing market would not have gone over well politically. Not because like people wouldn't have been supportive of it, but just all of the moneyed interest would have been like fuck you. So. Because real estate does a lot of, uh, uh, just a little political fact of, for people, real estate, the real estate uh, okay. industry does a lot of uh, donations to political parties. They lobby. The word you're looking for is lobby. They lobby a lot. They pay and spend a lot of money on lobbyists. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that is that. The other good thing is, is that she's looking to um, put the price caps on insulin that Medicare Caves currently has. And make nice. that make that industry wide. So you so the government would set the price on insulin, which is makes perfect sense because insulin literally costs pennies on the dollar to produce. And and it's 
the crazy. fact that the fact it's that the cap the for it at present right now is thirty five dollars is an insane price point already. It should be like a, like a couple. But bucks. it used to be like over a hundred dollars. Correct. So. Per. So I think I think price controls in that regard is very you know things with like you know you say it with me you know you know inelastic things that have inelastic demand shouldn't be left up to the free market. Agree. Regardless, moving on uh, into more fun news. Um, Randy Pitchford is uh, coping very hard about the Borderlands movie. Is he coping hard? Because he's straight up blocking people on fucking Twitter who are just slightly disagreeing with him. And it's crazy. Uh, it's sad to see such no, a legend. No, go down. no, Randy Pitchford has always <laughs> been a fuckhead. He was never a legend. He's always yeah, been he a, he's always always a, been a fuckhead. He's always been a fuckhead. <laughs> like, it is a testament to the skill of the developers and the strength of the Borderlands IP that it has kept Gearbox Studios alive. Without a doubt. But I will say, whatever shit he was on for the first two games, he he made some good games. Outside of that, though, he lost it. And the way they were treated during the production of those games was horrible. They so fucking abused the, 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 abuse the OG voice of Claptrap. And that's why he quit. Yeah, and I don't blame him. But, um, speaking of... I know you were telling me, like, have you played Fallout 1? And yet, Adam, I'm like, no, I haven't. I will get to it. But another total conversion is is uh, is is slated for, but is slated is going to be slated for a first release soon. And that is the total conversion of Oblivion, Sky Oblivion. I haven't heard about it. Okay. So the TES renewal. This is a a, a group that I have followed literally for over a decade at this point they wanted they started with a project which i will talk about here shortly but they recently in around 2018 ish um okay. not over 2018 over the pandemic got an influx of, of of volunteers and stuff for their second project sky oblivion which takes the entirety of the elder scrolls oblivion the fourth elder scrolls game and makes it playable in the skyrim engine oh nice that's really cool it is. And I am back here, feral, biting. Like, oh, I'm up here. What about Skywind? Oh. They've been working on the fucking Skywind, the total conversion of Morrowind into the Skyrim engine. Voice that game that had no voice acting, by the way, except for a couple lines. I've been waiting for this motherfucker for years. And, like, and here's the thing Oblivion was objectively the more popular Elder Scrolls game. It was the one that was more popular, and, and it was a big reason why they got a ton of investment, a ton of volunteers, and a ton of work to do. So here's the fucking problem. I know they've been working on it. I see the updates in their server, and I, and they're allegedly supposed to be releasing something during Creation Con this year, which is like the fucking you know thing where all the big modding projects come in and release updates together as a collective for eyeballs. Okay. But I'm like, what the fuck is going on with Skywind? You're like, what is it? Coming? I need, dude. It looks so fucking good. I'll send you a fucking link to the trailer of it. But you know, it's it's. Yeah, show uh, me right now. I'm so, I want, I need it, and I'm so. Let's react to the trailer. We're playing. Uh, let me let me go. Let me go to. Uh, let's look at. Um, hey, this is. You have to come and visit. Motherfucker. Let's go on YouTube. All right, there we go. Okay. Here. I'm gonna pump the window capture so everybody can see as well. All right, so this came out like three months ago, and I was fucking hyped. Over the past few years, Skywind's development team has poured more hours than we can count into bringing our vision to life. Many of our followers have been eager for a more in-depth look at the project. So join us today as we break down our current progress and what lies ahead. But how did Skywind? We're this is a 30 minute video. We are not watching this whole fucking thing. I am going to be bad. Yeah, I thought it was like a two minute trailer. Yeah. I didn't think it was a 30 minute in, in full in depth uh, level design description about how they're changing every aspect of the game. <laughs> no, let's look at the level design. Cool, cool, cool. 
With most tile sets now being completed, and most clutter having been designed by the 2D and 3D team, level design is well underway. Many regions are finalized in undergoing quality assurance, or QA, and peer review. Oh my god, the ghost gate looks so good. This is the gate, like, up here that, um, this ghost gate thing here is the thing that keeps, like, all the bad things out. This is, like, the end game area. Yeah, I've never played Morrowind or Oblivion. Definitely go give Oblivion a shot. It is it is certainly more approachable comparatively to Morrowind. It, like, but Morrowind is a great game. Don't get me wrong, but I would not recommend it to new people unless you have. I've play, seen play, videos. Of if you if you play the shit old. out of Skyrim <laughs> and you played the shit out of Oblivion out of Oblivion and you still want more, go do Morrowind. I warn you, there is a fucking learning curve. Yeah. I mean, it looks amazing. Others? Without a doubt. This looks exactly how I would expect Morrowind to look in a modern engine. Mm -hmm. Or a more modern engine compared to. Receiving finishing touches, including manual placement of details and starting QA. Most of the remaining areas are over 60% complete, with blocked layouts, clutter, and some details added. We also have 1,032 interiors to design, including settlements, cities, houses, shops, caves, forts, tombs, and yurts. Most interiors are well underway, though some areas are delayed due to awaiting tile sets. Vivek City's exterior how do you even do that? Wow. Like, it looks so good. Dude, I'm so that? excited to see Vivek City like this, man. Oh, God. Well, probably, right? Uh, how how do you make custom tiles in a game to create like a conversion? Even if it's like one item. How would you do that? You would... Um. You'd have to make 3D model the asset, make the mesh and textures, mm -hmm. and then and then implement them. Okay. Most of these assets, most of the assets that aren't like there's some assets that are in Skyrim that can be reused, but there's some that have to be like the fucking lanterns you see. But most of them no, have it's to all be custom built. built. Yeah. That's why I asked, because I'm just like, how would somebody fucking do that? And then you got an animated voice acting on top. Insane. They are voice acting. I know. That, that's why I'm saying it. Then they got to code it all. Jesus. I'm so excited. Not going to lie, though. I thought you were talking Beatable. about the... Uh, the Fallout One conversion that came out by recently. relying on I could give a rat's ass about that. Not a fan. I never. I, it's I, just I, the beginning, like stage, but it's in the Fallout Four. Make, make no mistake. I like, will oh. play it when it comes out, and it was probably a much more enjoyable uh, thing to play than the original Fallout One. But still, I'm not married to it like I am. The player journal, I rather that. than quest markers, just like in Morrowind. We have completed a first pass of testing on 67% of implemented quests and a first pass of testing on almost all finalized interior cells. The main challenge for QA is that testing can't start until areas and quests are ready to be tested. So by design, QA will be one of the last teams to wrap up before the release. I need it. I need it. Why don't you... Do you know anything about QA? Would you join that? A little bit. I mean, I don't have a QA stuff. Like, I wouldn't mind, but it's like, I need a fucking job, my guy. Yeah, just reach out. Worst case scenario, it gives you something to do for your time while you apply for jobs. Good point. Good point. Don't dox yourself here.
That, but yeah, no, nah, but that that's that. Um, but yeah, there's a, a, allegedly supposed to be something to announce either on the 8th, 17th, or 18th, which uh, is when they're going to be announcing during that con. So I'm I'm hopeful we'll get like a release time frame. Gotcha. So uh, did the Oblivion one come out or no? Not yet. It's coming. For, it's almost done. It's 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 getting. For, I'd say that if it doesn't come out this year, it's coming out next year for sure. I feel about it. for sure. I don't know, Matt. Next year, I got I got too many games this year to play. <laughs> Older horses, Space Marines coming. And Sparking Zero. I'm be I'm seething at the mouth. They released the cell trailer, my favorite fucking arc of all time. <laughs> I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. You want it bad, bad, don't you? Oh, you have no idea. I've been waiting 17 years, Evan. I haven't waited 17 years for anything. <laughs> Not even for dad to come home. No, literally. Don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. God, what else has been? Uh, me, I just finished uh, my first K-drama with Meta. Your first what? K-drama. Korean drama. How was that? What was that experience like? Boys Over Flowers, the 2003 K-drama version, can okay. be best described as... A woman and everybody else, a woman see like inadvertently mm. finds the other half of her whole idiot despite failing to fucking, by, despite her and everybody else in the goddamn show failing basic communication skills while also being severely autistic. Everybody else, everybody in the show, including her, by the way, not just her. So, uh, is K drama your new favorite genre of TV? Absolutely. I still hate television. <laughs> I hate television. Yeah, but you like, gotta grade it on a curve. <laughs> but no, no, it was good. Don't get me wrong. I just don't like TV. I'm a it. gamer. I prefer video games. If I'm gonna spend three hours of my life doing exactly fuck and all, I, I would rather it be grinding the fuck. Uh, out of dungeons and Elder Scrolls Online. At least I feel like at least I get the feeling of being productive while I'm being being a used sack of shit. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Yeah, it's interactive. I get it. Meanwhile, speaking of interactive, uh, two new DLC came out for uh, Cult of the Lamb. I'm not sure if you even knew this, but I see. Also... I see some clips. They added co-op. I see clips. They added co-op. Uh, also that they added a interactive webcomic or like comic that's in universe. It's nine extra dollars. It's a little DLC. I like supporting the studio. So I got it. That That is perfectly justifiable. I think that's lovely. And it gives like a little in universe little comic about this random little guy uh, who comes to the island of the Cold of the Lamb. Uh, he finds another little guy. They travel through the forest. They get into some misadventures till finally, uh, you know, uh, they get saved. And I won't say how, but he's looking for his brother the whole time. That's like in the YouTube trailer. So I'm not spoiling anything if you do want to support them. Apparently, you can also make the playable characters fuck. Yeah, you can fuck each other. Yep, yeah, that's the thing. There's also baby nurseries now. Uh, there's a few new uh, forms for your followers, especially if you get the uh, comic. So, you know, they also give you your followers a different costume. Small little knickknacks. But yeah, me and the girlfriend played it last night. We started our little new campaign. Uh, this time we're playing on Medium. We were playing on easy before i know baby stuff but she's a new gamer and stuff so you got to start off the easy but she's like i got it now I, i'm ready and yeah it's been fun so far so good yeah i'm not is that oh that's just two but yeah no that's cool oh well let me actually you know what fuck it i might as well pull it up just for she's and giggles character uh... name
belt. Uh, Vampire Survivors has a new update. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking at uh, so I'm just looking at the uh, I forget I have I, I have New World, so I still get updates from them occasionally. He's wild. I get that. Amazing game. Anyways, um, I digress. Uh, what is it I wanted to talk about? Yeah, I think, honestly, I've just kind of been in a lull this week. There's a lot going on at my end. Um, Pokemon, no. Still waiting on that Nintendo Direct. Anything else you wanted to bring up? I will say that I played, finally played, uh, the newest Mario Party. Oh, and that? it's actually pretty good. I I enjoy the like new mechanic changes and stuff. It was fun, uh, but yeah. How's Ellen's and yours podcast going? Well, she's super busy this week, so uh, this month, so we haven't been able to record. Uh, but we have four episodes so far. I'm waiting to get one more until we finally start releasing them because I'm like, I want the stockpile. I foresee us like taking, you know, one to two week breaks in between. And I don't want to like not release anything because then I know me and her are going to be less incentivized. So I'm, I'm still trying to game the system, but it's it's going a little hard because listen to this. This is all the stuff she's done so far, right? She's watching some dogs all working through this watching dogs she officiated a wedding she's got to go to her father's for his 60th birthday so she's doing like everything this month so yeah she's doing the so, most i was like i totally get it i'm not going to be an asshole about it i feel you like this is what you had to have to do i get it let's just commit to this next month for real because i don't want to you know I don't want to be inconsistent about it. That's my, that's going to be my biggest pet peeve about it. And we're both inconsistent people. So that's why I'm like, I need these buffer episodes, worst case scenario. Is that, is that why it, this works is because I hold your ass in the fire? Yes. And also you're not, a, you're a person who will communicate with me like, hey, this week I have this going on. I really can't do it. With Ellen, I have to, eh, and nothing not talking bad about her just i have to find out the information by actually reaching out and that's also my shortcoming so it, it's a perfect storm of both being like eh. <laughs> and i don't want that to happen fair enough on an unrelated notes you know that epic game store launched a mobile app you don't get to have they it because you're fucking dead. You, you you don't you don't get to have it because ios doesn't get it unless you're in the eu you're fucking me. Why? Is it because of the lawsuit in the EU that doesn't apply to here or some shit? Maybe that or that or they're just doing it because they're doing it in the EU first. Who knows? I just hope it comes out soon. Just so I could download, uh, what's it called? Claim the free games. That's all I care about, man. I I'm not playing video games on my phone like that. I just want to download the free games they give out. That shit is like crack. I'm not saying it's always good. Sometimes it's booty butt bullshit. But like, sometimes... Sometimes? I got Death Stranding. Like, the full gold edition or whatever DLC included. Uh, for free. And I was like, I was never going to buy this game. Cool. I have it now. That's dope. By the way, did you? By the way, on an unrelated note, did you hear about how big? So I want to be very clear. I love zombies, and we talked about this last week well, about Black Ops Six. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know how big the install size for Black Ops is? This is a game, by the way, that I'm only playing for zombies. Probably like 500 gigabytes. Close, 300. Jeez. Thank God. Let me just say, let me just say, the biggest investment right now, today, in today's gaming marketplace, 
with Game Pass, PlayStation Premium, uh, whatever fucking cloud-based services you could get games off of, storage is your biggest investment. I've gotten a four terabyte hard drive, uh, SSD, I'm sorry, SSD in both my PC and my PS5. You, at this fucking point, you need it. If nothing else, just so you're not spending half of the time on your console or PC looking at install and downloading screens, it's not worth it. Just like Evan just said, you should be utilizing your time in a productive productive i use air quotes productive man manner when you're experiencing your entertainment if gaming is your choice and downloading and deleting games is not interactive <laughs> oh. I, I like I, I, this is a spoiled spoiled mindset i accept it but i like being able to say hey look that's the game i want right there download i don't want to worry about deleting this and deleting that and then don't get, don't worry, in a few months I'll go through it and delete two terabytes of games that I never touched. But like, I just like the ability to do it, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't know. It, it, there's a, there's a thing to me that feels relatively frustrated by a game company, by like, Here's the thing, Activision is de like what's about Call of Duty is definitely the you know the biggest dickhead about this. Most people who play Call of Duty just play Call of Duty and either they, multiplayer or fucking zombies. They yeah. don't play the campaign. <laughs> the, here's the thing you we have we have to accept as like, you know, avid gamers and who people who care about this medium. Most people who engage with this medium play maximum two, possibly three games. They play Call of Duty, and they play their preferred sports game, whether that is FIFA, Madden, or 2K. They will Two of the worst fucking companies. Two of the worst gaming companies, though. Oh my god. <laughs> Right. And there will occasionally a game will come out that the normies will also those normies will also enjoy. Spider-Man 2, prime example. There is a Red reason Dead. why people Red Dead Redemption 2. Exactly. There is a reason why someone like a Kai Sinat will look at Baldur's Gate 3 winning and be like, I've never even heard of this fucking game. And not understanding. Don't get me wrong. But and, and I know, and, and and this is put to bed. We were right; they were wrong. Like Baldur's Gate three deserved it. And there's and by the way, Patch Seven's coming out uh uh either end of this month or sometime next month. Uh, this it'll be the last patch, and it'll also come in, and it also will come with um uh, uh an even more diverse amount of romance scenes. As well as a, ro a robust endings for evil characters. Said, so, "Woo, we're getting the doggy scene. Woo, about a dog on." <laughs> That's what I love about the gaming community. They're really like, "Can we have different scenes of them fucking?" I I, I appreciate. Look, I want to see my character give Carlac like, back shots. I'm sorry. Like what? Like I am a simple man. I get it. No, I respect it. Hey, I respect it. I fuck with it. I love the vibe. <laughs> like I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure like I'm pretty sure like I'm not gonna speak a little bit like, so that would be something to do but, with, uh, go back, something something having go to do with with, 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 with ha something having to do with uh, um Halson and putting him in his place. Back to your point. Back to your point. My point is is, is that um ultimately uh the these they're they're just people that do not engage with they just get on the game. The game. The singular game they play. And you and know I mean, they I... you know they're they 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 are not inter they care about the how it looks. They care about how it looks and that it plays exactly the same how they did. 
and how they are used to, and that's it. You know, they you don't have people that are wanting to play a potion crafter, cult of the lamb, a Stardew Valley. You know, the you don't Even have a high fi rush. <laughs> Crazy Taxi. Um, you don't have people that want to play a rap or in Minecraft even. Although the amount of, like people will people these are the people that don't play Minecraft anymore because they are adults. They play big people games now. They view these games as like um they they, they, they don't it's you know it's 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 it's, it's odd to me. We, we we're not like this. We we look at this medium like it is vibrant. It can offer many different things and experiences. Now, don't get me wrong. Well, there's so. I, I just want to say there's so many more um, gratifying and awe-inspiring experiences that video games can offer outside of a multiplayer. 4v4 or 8v8 team deathmatch game and don't get me wrong like there is there are times when i want that adrenaline spike uh palm sweating fucking experience but especially especially after skill-based uh, matchmaking it made the game so much harder for no reason every single time you pick up call of duty if you're not what's it called if you're not uh you know a casual gamer who only plays it like once every three months or the season's fucking uh what's it called uh reset and everything you go from match to match with your palms sweaty hands fucking shaking going like oh my god i'm actually in war type shit because it's skill based they say oh you got 20 kills in this fucking in this uh uh team death match well guess what now we're gonna put you in a level where everybody got 20 fucking kills but they got 20 kills 10 times in a row so you're gonna have to be really really good let's see how you do and that's not fun because part of the experience especially in the early 2000 to early 2010 uh call of duty experience was getting in lobbies that were just dog shit sometimes and that was part of the fun ah it, it, here's the thing. everything about do, call do, of duty at this point has is counterintuitive i, I, I actually think i'm actually not necessarily against skill-based matchmaking And let, uh, and I, I, let, me, let me say why. Let me say why. When the, the skill-based matchmaking makes it so new players such as myself, there's a re like, here's the thing. I don't play Call of Duty shooters. I've liked them when I've played them here and there. But the problem is, is that my pedigree is not that. When you are in fucking... You know, in 2012, when you, when you were, like, fucking in Call of Duty lobbies and shit, I was torrenting the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim and playing it with a with hundred bots. Like, I, like, my, like my, the pedigree. But you also, time out, you also had the best zombies at the time. So if you weren't playing Call of Duty for its multiplayer, you at least had the experience with the third fucking uh, mode. Nowadays, the third mode is consigned to oblivion, especially with Infinity Ward. Spec Ops used to mean something. It used to mean something. <laughs> yeah. I will say that with the new update, like we talked about last week, the new update coming to Zombies is looks like looks to be pretty good. And and I I will say as much, even though I cut my tape from the old days on original Kino, I will say I loved three and I love the feeling of playing three and the changes that they made I'm excited about. I don't know if it's worth three hundred fucking gigabytes on my goddamn computer, which is seventy percent of my which is more which is seventy percent of my fucking hard drive. But about yeah, Activision regarding Call of Duty, I do remember this because uh, for the 2019 Modern Warfare, they started doing it with uh, Warzone. I think you can download segmented parts. 
So I think you could download just zombies. I think the main game altogether, language packs, campaign, uh, multiplayer, and zombies is all going to be 300 gigabytes. But I'm pretty sure you could pick and choose which one. Unless you, like, get it through Game Pass. Then I'm pretty sure you are just going to download the 300 gigabytes. Because they're like, you're not getting the full game. Fuck you. Fuck you and your goddamn storage, bitch. <laughs> yeah, just get, 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 you know, get fucked up game. Literally. I don't know. I mean, I don't blame them. I will say, though, when it comes out, I'm down to... uh, I'll get... In worst case scenario, if you need me to do it, I'll get you Game Pass when it comes out, and we'll just fucking play zombies together on stream. I'm down for for that. Oh, no, for sure. I'm I'm, I'm I'm absolutely planning on getting the crew together. And and there's only three of us, so you would obviously make a perfect fit. Cool. Bet. Yeah, I'm excited because uh, it's also, I forget what it was, but there's a lot of interesting changes coming. It looks cool. Uh, not to shit talk it at all. Uh, multiplayer also looks somewhat fun. I don't, uh, but it looks the same. Like uh, I'm commenting on the same game every single year. My take is always going to be, it looks somewhat mama, fun, mama but mid. it's the same game. <laughs> mama, mama, mid. I'm just saying, after having these experiences in video games with, like, especially FromSoft games, like, I don't play Elden Ring, I don't play Dark Souls, I don't play Sekiro, I don't play Demon Souls, but I could appreciate the storytelling from a a gameplay standpoint, and I could also appreciate the artwork, because I played fucking, uh, uh, what's it called? Armor Core 6. Like, they just have storytelling that is amazing with visuals that oh, just would you, would you would you like to family share my library i'm down like i've been down you for could, that you, i i own dark souls one two three elden ring second if you want to give them a shot for free you can i have the dlc for all of them that yeah sure sure um, definitely give Elden Ring a shot, and I would love to like do a stream where like I we I have you up on Discord, your your fucking PlayStation, your fucking PC or whatever, and, and I'm just and, and I'm backseating the whole fucking time, <laughs> and I'm just like Evan, I don't know what the fuck you're saying to me, I don't know how to do that. You know what I really want to play? I don't know why, but because I've heard that the first boss is so fucking hard, I really want to play Sekiro. Like, I just want to know how hard it is. I know it's the hardest one. Here's the thing. Here's the thing you got to remember with Sekiro. Sekiro is not an action game. It is a rhythm game. There, It is, it is, it is vibes based. You, once, once you kind of like get into the, you know, through and throw, like playing Elden Ring is one thing. Like, that Elden Ring allows you to, like, approach issues with multitude of different options and be successful. Sekiro Sek- is one build, right? Yeah. If you, if you play, like, Osu, like, that rhythm game, that is similar to, like, how Sekiro kind of plays. It's it's block, 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 jump, dodge, block, jump, jump, block, 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 jump, stab. Like, it's it, it's it, there's a rhythm to it. And it's mm. not everybody's cup of tea, but the people who do like it fucking love it. So No, I bet. I, I bet. So I would say if you want to play something, play Elden Ring. Um, because if you want to play a FromSoft game, play Elden Ring. If you want to... Sekiro's fun and interesting and very good, but it's different. It's not the same thing. So if you're looking for like difficulty, play Elden Ring. Because it has the added benefit of... I don't like throw throw my head against a brick wall that is this boss. I'm gonna fuck off and do something else, and then you go fuck off and do something else. Get some levels, find a new weapon, new spell, some new armor. You come back and kick the boss's ass in your head. There's a I lot. Feel, le- feel. There's a lot less beating your head against a brick wall. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, but that's also low key the appeal for the other games and from their library. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, aside from, uh, oh, did I tell you I got invited to the, um, I got invited to, it was called the, uh, not an, 
email invite. I don't know if I can fucking find it in one second. So Valve is working on a new hero shooter. You know, I guess fucking um, TF2 can go fuck itself then. But literally, I digress. One of the things I uh, saw with it, let's see, render thing, let's go back to one. God, I have so many fucking things. Hey. Uh, let's see. They have a new one coming out called Deadlock, which is mildly interesting. Um, I'm actually, uh, I was actually thinking about giving it a shot. Unfortunately, uh, I need, I kind of want to like read about the rules and stuff for the open beta because I've seen people try to stream it and get it and uh, getting like vac banned because of it. So we'll see what ends up happening. But yeah, that sounds like, a little tricky. Yeah, because like here, I'll show, uh, I'll show the screen real quick. For everybody watching and listening, like it's just there, like it's just here. There's no assets at all. There's not just not no saying it. Like it? here, I'll uh, I'll uh, we'll change the screen so you can see it. I sorry for those listening and watching. I do have the uh, setup for how I do things here uh, and show people stuff. It's like, yeah, it looks like this part. It looks like this. Yeah, it's like there's just nothing. Huh. Yeah, wild, right? So interesting. Yeah, it's, so it's I'm unsure necessarily on what that would possibly like what that looks like. But you know, I'm downloading it and I'll test it this weekend and fuck it, I'll make a review. I don't know if I'm able to screen cap with it other like, but they would have to have like I think maybe root level DRM for that. I don't know. But here's the thing, there's not really any games that, like, I care about my DAC ability to use. I don't play Counter-Strike. I don't really play TF2 like that anymore. And I never really did at all, so if I do lose it, who gives a shit? I think, yeah, I think, I think what I'll, I think what I'll do is I'll just record it on my phone, like, on, like, a stand or whatever. Just, just so we can kind of, like, see it. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Like but, uh, 2010 fucking uh, 2009 YouTube footage. <laughs> yeah. With an old school. But yeah. On that note, um, I don't really have anything else to talk about. So you have something I'm thinking. I want to say started playing uh, Helldivers finally. It's pretty fun. Finally. Uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. It's, it is, I, I'm sad that, I'm, I'm bummed that you didn't get to play it during the, it's height, it was very, it was very much feeling. No, I bet, I bet. But, uh, I've been having some experiences myself, so. I played one solo game, and then I found, uh, Homie to run a few games with. So, it was pretty cool. Good. So, I just want to ask, the only way to get new weapons is through War Bonds, huh? Yes, but um, the game's very generous. With no, no, um, no, I see that without a doubt. Yeah, that's that's. I just the, thought there was also like a uh, what is it? Requisition is the other currency for stratagems and upgrades and stuff. So um, there's a, there's a, there's two terminals, or there's a terminal you can go to that upgrades your ship. You, John Hell, you are not John Helldiver. Your character is the fucking spaceship. Mm -hmm. In your in the av in, in what you play as is just a rotating circle of poor schmucks that are in are in frozen containers. Yeah. No, I, I got that. I just thought there were also gonna be like a requisition weapon shot. But the way they do it, I don't I don't mind. It's not bad at all. No, I think it, it I I do I don't know. I, I think, do like uh, that you can get premium currency through gameplay. Like, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah like, without they, a doubt. Like, focus-wise, they do everything that I like a video game to do as a live quote-unquote service. Yep. Like, at every live service should look at, like, how they... Like, the, the level of generosity 
of it is if you fucking play the game for it's like you an hour every for if you play it in the game for an hour or two a week you get you you get more than much more than if you just spent than like much more than your ten dollars the game if you play it and never spend a dime is perfectly enjoyable yep and perfectly attainable that's what i also like about warframe like say what you want about the mass amount of shit but i be- i truly believe somebody- i want to love warframe it's just there's so fucking much in the new player experience and it's so it's complicated cheats. and it sucks it's no no, no i'll Nothing's agree explained. i'll say this straight up right now if you are a new player coming to warframe look up strategies look up reddit sub uh, look up subreddits, look up everything you can because that shit is fucking complicated and the game sucks. Absolutely is despicable at explaining a damn thing. I'll agree with you right here. Like, th- I will say that. But once you understand it, once you, like, get the foundations of it, it is a very enjoyable game. I just realized something. I don't think we're friends on Steam. I don't think we are. I don't think I have any friends. How the fuck? Hold the fuck up. Hold up. Hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. <laughs> All right. End of the fucking podcast. I'm, we're about to go deal with this shit. How the fuck? Mother fuck. Are you fucking kidding? Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a, join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hivmedia.gg slash Discord. Discord link's there. We'd love to have you. And given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ass, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at hivmedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing and a dollar a month is a boot to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you and have a great day.